geodesy science dealing with measurements of mapping the gravity field and shape of the earth divide into physical geodesy and geometrical geodesy physical geodesy it is the study of the earth's gravitational field and its relationship to the solid structure of the planet geometrical geodesy it seeks by geometrical and astronomical measurements to determine the precise size and shape of the earth and to locate positions accurately on the earth's artificial earth satellites have been used to define the size and shape of earth and determine its gravity and rotation parameters thus was born the satellite geodesy geodesy based on the use of satellites satellites were sent into orbit special spacecrafts designed exclusively for geodetic applications that in addition to determine more precisely the dimensions of earth also allowed to measure the location of points on earth's surface with great accuracy act as reference for mapping and for monitoring of geodynamic phenomena such as crustal motion earth rotation and polar motion john a o'keefe a planetary scientist in 1955 it was his idea to use satellite geodesy as part of the proposal to the national space foundation on the utility of an artificial unmanned earth satellite he proposed an inflated satellite to be illuminated by searchlights or radar geodetic satellites are usually equipped with various devices that facilitate their location transmitters of radio signals of stable frequency that are tracked through the doppler effect light sources that emit flashes of light of great intensity radar altimeters used to measure the distance between the satellite and ground surface accelerometers for measuring gravity techniques of satellite geodesy may be classified by instrument platform earth to space methods a satellite may be observed with ground-based instruments space to earth methods carry an instrument or sensor as part of its payload to observe the earth space to space methods use its instruments to track or be tracked by another satellite In 6th century BC, Pythagoras concluded that the Earth was round. 300 years later, Eratosthenes accomplished a quite accurate calculation of the radius of the Earth, with a method based on the determination of the length of an arc of meridian delimited by two places of well-known latitude. In 1615, Villabordus Snellius applied the triangulation for the first time, and he assumed that the Earth was a sphere. He used for the measurement of an arc of a meridian in the Netherlands. Triangulation the length of a meridian arc using a special method that requires direct measurement of relatively small distances, named bases, and some angles. But in the 17th century, it became clear that the Earth was not spherical. Newton, in his Principia, published in 1687, he observed that, due to the daily rotation of the Earth around its north-south axis, the centrifugal forces had to produce a bulge at the equator so the Earth would look like a flattened sphere or spheroid. He calculated the flattening of the Earth defined as the ratio F equals a B slash A, where A equals the equatorial radius B equals the polar radius. In this period, the Earth was visualized as essentially an ellipsoid of revolution. Gian Domenico Cassini, a French astronomer, concluded that the Earth was flattened at the equator and bulging at the poles, which verified the prediction of Newton. By the mid-20th century, the equatorial radius of the reference ellipsoid had been determined as 6,378,388 m. The flattening was put as 1 slash 297. In early 1964, a member of the U.S. Department of Defense revealed that among the many satellites launched discreetly by Vandenberg were part of the Secker program. The Secker system was an all-weather, mobile, geodetic tool which was employed by the Army to collect more accurate data for determining relative locations of land masses. Another important series of military spacecraft used in geodesy is transit satellites. The transit satellite system was used extensively for Doppler surveying, navigation, and positioning. Observations of satellites in the 1970s by worldwide triangulation networks allowed for the establishment of the World Geodetic System WGS. Finally, the development of GPS, Global Positioning System, by the USA in the 1980s allowed for precise navigation and positioning and soon became a standard tool in surveying. 
In the 1980s and 1990s, satellite geodesy began also to be used for monitoring geodynamic phenomena, such as crustal motion, earth rotation, and polar motion. A satellite altimetry is a satellite transmits microwave pulses in the radar frequency domain to the ground and receives the return signals after reflection at Earth's surface. The round-trip flight time of the signal determines the distance between the spacecraft and the Earth's surface. From this distance or height, the local surface effects such as tides, winds, and currents are removed to obtain the satellite height above the geoid. In 1970, the Skylab space station succeed in the mission of testing the new geodetic technique which is satellite altimetry OGEOS-3 and sees it. GEOS, Geodynamics Experimental Ocean Satellite 3, was launched on April 9, 1975 at Vandenberg by the NASA. It was a multipurpose satellite. Its mission was designed to further an understanding of the Earth's gravitational field, size and shape of the terrestrial geoid, deep ocean tides, sea state, currents, structure of the Earth's crust, solid Earth dynamics and remote sensing technology. Sees it was launched on June 26, 1978 at Vandenberg by the NASA. It was designed to test various oceanographic sensors and gain a better understanding of Earth's seas. A small group of highly skilled people have completed building a small satellite which is known as LAGEOS, short for Laser Geodynamic Satellite. The path followed by a satellite is not arbitrary, but is completely determined by the initial conditions and the forces acting on it. Therefore, to obtain the highest precision, a geodetic satellite must be designed in such a way as to minimize all those influences on its movement not due to the Earth's gravitation. Satellites were made into spherical shape, a heavy material, and a very high orbit because of the satellites are only insensitive to the atmospheric drag and solar radiation. This is the case of the geodetic satellites of second generation, such as Starlet and Lagios. Starlet and Stella Starlet spacecraft was launched on February 6, 1975, by French CNEs at Guyana Space Center. Stella spacecraft was launched on September 26, 1993, by French CNEs at Guyana Space Center. Are virtually identical French passive satellites. Their small size compared to their mass gives them a much larger sensitivity to the gravitational attraction than to the surface forces due either to the residual atmosphere at the satellite or to radiation pressure. LAGEOS, Laser Geodynamics Satellite, was launched on May 4, 1976 by NASA at Vandenberg. The LAGEOS satellites make it possible to determine positions of points on the Earth with extremely high accuracy due to the stability of their orbits. It was made to provide an accurate measurement of the satellite's position with respect to Earth, determine the planet's shape, and determine tectonic plate movements associated with continental drift.